Let's, uh, let's talk today. I, I'm going to give you just a practical message. You know, I, I'll tell you in this series that we've been in called Higher, this is the fourth sermon, uh, Living with a Next Level Perspective. That's been kind of our sub-theme. And I knew at the beginning of this series that I wanted to talk about calling. Everybody say calling. So the first couple of messages were about calling. Like, what does that mean? What does it mean uh, to understand your calling, to know it and understand it, to live in it? We talked about serving uh, one of those weeks and what it means to serve in our calling, that that's not just uh, right here in the church, although that's important, but it's how we live our lives outside of the church, that we are the church, we are the body of Christ, we are the hands and the feet of the Lord. And so serving, right, is that way God works through our life. And, um, and then, you know, last week we, we talked about several different things. You know, we talked to, about the, just God's hand over our life, right? And the mission that God has, the missio day that God has, that we want to be on God's mission, amen, not on our own agenda. We want to be on God's mission to accomplish the Great Commission. And we get to be a part of that incredible story that God is writing. So I, I wanted to shift today a little bit. Talk about purpose. Talk about God's purpose. Calling, mission, now purpose. But I want to do it on the context of talking about relationship. And uh, I'll say this right on the front side. God made you for purpose. God made you on purpose. (laughs) He called you and he made you for a purpose. None of us like to do anything that doesn't have purpose, right? We don't, we don't like to uh, to, to, to go anywhere without it being purposeful. We don't like to you know, go to church for no purpose, right? I mean, there's, there's a purpose attached to everything in our life. You need to understand that God made you on purpose for a purpose. And so we talked in the, the first couple of weeks just about identity, and I just wanted to remind you uh, of that, right? First Peter chapter 2, 9 and 10, I won't bring it up on the screen, but remember what it says, that Uh, the apostle Peter, he said, you are a royal priesthood. You've got to know who you are. You're the people of God and you've been called to proclaim the name of the Lord. So your twofold calling always is to know that you're a child of God and know that God has a mission for your life that is intended for a high purpose, a strong purpose, a kingdom purpose. It's bigger than just what you can see in this world, that God made you for a high calling, for a high purpose, and you've got to remember who you are in Christ. That's so important. And remember that no matter what season of life it is, no matter what's going on, that God has called you to lift up the name of Jesus. And you know what? That's, that's fairly easy in this room and in this setting to lift up the name of Jesus because we're all doing it, and that's why we're here together. But it's more uh, difficult outside the walls of the church many times because the pressures are there. As we said last last week, right, we struggle to take the sacred into the secular because the secular is everywhere and we live in the secular, right, and in our jobs and and sometimes even in our homes depending on what's going on, what media and what the TVs are producing in our homes these days. It's secular most of the time and so how do we take the sacred into the secular? But when we merge those two right? We are, we are on God's mission and God's purposes flow out of that. So I want to talk today for a few minutes about relationship, about relationship with God, because that is, that is where purpose flows into our life, is out of our relationship with the Lord. And so I, I'm going to be honest with you. I had a different message uh, planned for this week, and I felt the Lord just kind of check me uh, a few days ago and, and, and shift to to this. And the Lord led me to this passage. And it's a passage that I, I think we're familiar with pieces of it. Uh, I even quoted some of it in the, the baby dedication just a few moments ago in the prayer. Uh, it's a passage that David would have, have written. You know, David is the, the Bible said, is the man after God's own heart, right? What, a, what an incredible title. But we know that David didn't always get it right. David had some hiccups, But David had this relationship with God that we all can long for, that we all can strive for, and oh, by the way, we all can have. I was going to say this at the end of the message. I'll say it on the front side. God is no respecter of persons. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the same relationship that some of the heroes of faith had with God, you and I now have access to as well. 
So we've got to know that, that God wants us to be connected to him. And he wants us to have purpose in our life. He wants us to know who we are. And, you know, really this psalm uh, is just, it's powerful because it's, it's transparent. Everybody say transparent. That's a scary word for some of us. But David was transparent before God, and he records it in this psalm, which again, this very well could have been a, a, a song that he would have written. But listen to what he says and, and kind of get the imagery of this psalm. By the way, I'm going to read the whole thing. I don't normally do that, but this is the word of God. So if I just read this today and then prayed and dismissed you, some of you'd be really excited about that, but that's not going to happen. But it'd be enough because this is the word of God. But I want you to hear the pattern of this as David is talking to God, right? Listen to what he says. He says, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit, when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Listen to what David is saying here. He says, God, you know everything about me. He, again, he's being transparent before the God. God, he's saying, God, you're sovereign. You know everything. He says, before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in. I like that. Behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you're there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, I settle on the far side of the sea. Even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Listen to what he says here. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will, will shine like the day for the darkness is as light to you. For you created, come on, my inmost beings. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Come on, remember that. I've been telling you that a lot. You are a spirit. God knows you as a spirit. He created you as a spirit. Before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. Listen to what he says. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would say the wicked, would slay the wicked away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. He uses some strong words here. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, or abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. But listen to the shift here. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Pray with me this morning. God, we thank you for your word. I thank you for every person in this place and those that are watching today. I thank you that you would speak to us, Lord, even as we look at this uh, transparent psalm that David wrote, Lord, as he, he bared his heart before you. But we thank you that as we do that, Lord, there are things that we experience in our relationship with you that we would never experience otherwise. Lord, I thank you today that your people are, are drawing closer to you. Lord, you said that if we would draw near to you, you would draw near to us. So I thank you for the spiritual ground that your people are gaining, Lord, during this season, Lord, even, even as we are, are, are mobilizing back together, Lord, even physically, I thank you that there is spiritual ground that we are gathering over. We are taking back in our relationship with you. And so, Lord, I thank you for those, especially those this morning that feel disconnected from you, Lord, I thank you. By the time we finish today, Lord, they would be reconnected in relationship with you. And we give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen, amen, right? God made you for a purpose. David understood this, right? He articulates it in this psalm. I love the, the way he describes God in this. God, if I, go, if I go here, you're still aware. Before I even speak, you know what I'm going to say. God, you're sovereign. You are omniscient. You know everything. You're omnipresent, right? You're everywhere at one time. By the way, the devil can't do that, by the way. 
Only God can do that. He's everywhere at one time. And David understood that. And then he takes it to a personal side of things. Like, God, you know everything about me. You know exactly how I'm wired. God knows every tendency you have. He knows every personality court that you have. Turn to your neighbor and say, God made me that way. That is not an excuse for some of you. It's not an excuse. But watch this. Some of us, though, that we have dysfunctional tendencies, but they're actually connected to God-designed tendencies that he's made us certain ways, but we need to be tempered by the Holy Spirit. That's why we need the Holy Spirit in our life, because he helps mold and you know, sandpaper us down a little bit to shave off the rough edges. But God made us. But most importantly today, and here's the first point if you're taking notes, is God made you to be known. God made you to be known to himself, most importantly, but also as your identity, the one we've been talking about, your calling to be a child of God, that you have blue blood, that you're a part of a royal priesthood, that God created you on this earth not to just take up space and not to just be here, that God has a plan for you. And it starts with knowing who you are in Christ. God wants you to know that you are known to him. And he wired you. Think about that. God created you and the purpose of your creation was to be, but to be connected to him. So think about this. Every human being is hardwired to be connected to God. What a cool thought. That God made you as a spirit, right? Before you had a soul and you had a body, just as David understood, before you were formed in your mother's womb, God hardwired you to be connected to him. To the God of the universe. Almighty, majestic, Jehovah, Yahweh, God. God created you, by the way, in his image. In his image. To be in relationship with him, to be in communion with him, to be in, in, in constant connection with him, because there's this power that flows out of your life. We could say it this way. You are the fullest version of you as you fully surrender to that truth and to the Lord. If you want to be closer to the Lord, then learn how to surrender better. Everybody say, I give up. There is a, a word that I, I've taught you a couple times, and I shared it a couple months ago again, but the Lord keeps taking me back to this word, and it's a Hebrew word. And uh, the prophet Isaiah you know, said this word, it's recorded in scripture, and in the Hebrew word, it's hanani. Everybody say hanani. Say it again, hanani. And the word means, here I am. It's one of the most powerful words that we can say out of our mouths is, God, here I am. Hanani. It's a great moment in your life when you say, here I am to the great I am. Here I am. God, I surrender to you. In my weaknesses, I surrender to you. In my victories, God, I surrender to you. This day, as I wake up before I start my day, God, Hanani, here I am. I'll say it this way, not to be, you know, uh, sketchy or, or funny, but it's when we get naked before God to say, here I am. It's being vulnerable. It's being transparent. David understood that, by the way. That's why he was so close to God. And, and it wasn't that he didn't fall at times. He had sin at times. But he always came back to Hanani. Here I am, God. Yeah, I blew it, but Hanani, here I am. And it's in those moments that our identity becomes restored or our identity grows all the more. And as your identity in Christ grows, then so does your confidence in what God has done. And, you know, I, I think one of the things that I, I really want to drive home is that many of us, you know, we, we're saved. We've experienced salvation. We've experienced a Hanani moment. God, I'm, you know, I, I'm a sinner, right? I, I, I need your salvation. I believe in the work that you accomplished through Jesus Christ, you know. But can I tell you, it's not a one-time Hanani, <laughs> That the Christian life is this constant surrender back to God, saying, God, I, here I am. Here I am again in my weakness, in my fumbles, right? In my failures, 
and my incompleteness and my unworthiness. I love the song that we sang earlier for the first time here. I've heard it before, but you know, it, it, it says that, right? Here I am in my, in my weakness, God, but you're enough. The Lord is in this place. I stay vulnerable before you. And as you do that, right, you, you sense that God is able to do certain things in your life. You know that God is at work. Uh, one of the things that I was going to say this morning is, uh, you know, masks are, are very popular right now, and rightfully so in the middle of a pandemic, I guess. Uh, and if, if, you, if you wear a mask, then that's, that's good. Some of us need to be wearing a mask. Uh, but why do you wear a mask? You wear a mask uh, for protection, Okay, stay with me here. Don't, don't get political or anything. Just for protection. Uh, uh, in some cases, these days, we wear masks for presentation. Just reality. And then sometimes we wear masks because, uh, because we're hiding, right? Now, let's, let's be real. And in the world that we live in today, you know, I, I just picked a couple of these, but, you know, it's the mask of, of perfection. I won't put this on because of this microphone, and it will make them upset as it makes some crazy noises. But perfection, it's this mask of perfection that we put on to live in in this world, right? That we've got to look a certain way, and it's a real pressure that the secular culture is bringing upon us. Or even in our work, right? We've got to perform a certain way. Things have to be perfect. As I've told you recently, that perfection will take you to a dark place because you'll never be able to feel successful in any way. You'll never be able to match up. If you're looking for a perfect marriage, guess what? You're going to live in disappointment. There is no such thing. There's some good ones, and good ones can become great ones, but there's no perfect marriage. Everybody said amen. amen. Come on. Even, even in, your, in your work, right, that, that you can't live in perfection. You can live in excellence. Amen. Be excellent. That's a, that's a heartbeat that honors God. But you can't live in this perfection zone Young lady this morning, can I tell you, stop looking for perfection in the mirror or you'll always live with this complex of never being able to match up. Be set free today. Perfection. Take off the mask of perfection. You know, here, I mean, here's another one, just success, right? That su- the mask of success. Well, I'm successful. If I put this mask on, I'm, I'm successful if I, if I have this type of bank account, if I have this type of title in my life, or if I have this type of monetary thing, whatever that may be, that success, what that looks like. And we put on the mask of success many times to show that, that we've got it together on some level, uh, whatever your field of work may be, that I'm, I'm successful if, and, and it becomes a mask that we put on. Again, for different reasons, for protection or just for presentation or to hide with. And then this is probably the biggest mask that we put on is pride. It's pride. And the pride mask is, is one that all of us keep in our repertoire. It's always there for us to put, put on. And this mask, though, this mask will prevent you from Hanani. This mask will keep you from being real with yourself as well as real with God. Pride will prevent you from being known who God's called you to be. It will prevent you from being uh, close to God as well if you let it. But remember what the scripture says, pride comes before a, a fall. Well, that's, I mean, that's all we need to know right there, right? We like to use that toward other people. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm guilty of it. We're all, like, I, we quote that toward other people. Well, you know, pride comes before a fall. They're just about there like this. Just a... But we all deal with pride. Pride's something that we all wrestle with. And it becomes this mask that we put on. And many times we don't even realize it. Sometimes it can even move. Uh, it's not pride, but it's just this confidence in ourself. And I don't know about you, but I find that when I get confident in me, that I usually get humbled around the corner. And so we've got to identify those, those masks. Take the mask off. Amen. Amen. Come on. Take the mask off. I know all of us have our thoughts around masks, and I know they're serving a purpose right now. Uh, but spiritually speaking, take the mask off. You've got to realize you got one on, first of all. And then you can't, because what, what that does is it causes you to not be real with your creator. 
It prevents us where we don't have this authentic exchange. And again, many times we don't even realize we've got a mask on. That's the problem. That's why we got to get real before the Lord. That's why we got to say, God, I surrender to you today. If there's any mask that I'm putting on to try to present this way or try to, try to be this, or if there's something in me that I'm not being real with and I put a mask on, today I take it off and I say to you, here I am to the great I am because I'm known by you. Amen? Number, number two, God desires to touch my life deeply. Everybody say deeply. Everybody say, let's go deep. All right. This is really what the heart of this message is all about. God wants, and and David understood this, God wants to do something not surface level in my life. God wants to do something deep in my life. God wants to go further. I'll say it this way. This series is called Higher. If you want to go higher, then you got to go deeper. If you want to go higher in, in, in what it is that God's called you to do and what God's mission is and God's purposes are, then you've got to go deeper with God. And the world likes the, the, the surface. I mean, if we're all honest, you know, we, we put God in our box. You know, we've all got different God boxes. And we, we like to have God on our own terms. We like to have God you know, in these little bite-sized pieces you know, once or twice a week. Maybe once a day, it just depends, you know, if I can just get a, if I can just get a word, if I can just get a scripture, if I can just, you know, and again, I celebrate that on any level. But at some point, we've got to realize there's some things that God wants to do, and they're not on the surface. They're deep. They're deep. Look, no, no, nobody likes surgery. If I was to ask you to raise your hand today, if you like surgery, nobody in this room would raise their hand. Well, I guess surgery is not fun. But somebody's going to cut on you. Right? That's not fun. But watch this. Why do we have surgery? Right? It's, it's to correct something. It's to remove something. Maybe that's not healthy many times. And so we've got to say, Hanani, God, here I am. But then we've got to realize if we want to go deeper with God, we've got to Hanani again and say, God, come in and do a work in my heart. Come and give me a heart transplant. Come and, and, and take that cancer out of my life that I've let be there. Come and take that bitterness. Come and take that pride and uproot it out of my life. Not just so that he can do surgery, but so he can take me deeper in who he is. That's the point. It's not, so many times I think we just look at God like he's just, he's sitting up there just wanting to take things away or just correct us. And God says, no, look, I, I want to go deep with you. I want to go deep with you. I, I want to have this relationship with you that's, that's powerful I want you to know who I am. I want you to know what my, my, my thoughts are. And I love what Psalm 42 says. Again, David talking. This is the psalm that many times we quote. You know, As a deer pants for the water, so my soul, God, is longing after you. I want to go deep with you. And then he says in verse 7, Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. David says in this psalm, I'm overwhelmed, God. And you're calling me out. Not calling me out as in, he'll do that too. (laughs) But calling me deeper in the things of God. It's time to get off the shallows. It's time to get off the shorelines. It's time for us to let go of our comfort, to get God out of our box, and time to swim out into the breakers that have swept over me. Because God says, hey, I'm out here. And I want you to be with me. I want you to be connected with me. I'm calling you out into deeper things. God does not hang out in shallow waters. He hangs out in deep things. And and the the greatest moments in your life will be when you surrender to the deep things that God desires to do in your life. And and that means getting off the, the shoreline, and it means letting go. Everybody say this after me. I don't need to be comfortable. I made you say it. Because we want to be comfortable. We want to be in this zone where we can predict things, at least on some level, you know. And then we call the rest like faith. You know what I'm saying? Like, we like to be able to, to, to walk in faith, but still know most of the story. You know, and we call that faith. <laughs> that's, that's really not faith. God says, hey, I'm out there. And just like Peter in the boat, Jesus, if that's you... 
You tell me it's you, and I will come out of this comfort zone. I'll come out of the security that I have, and I will follow after you. That's faith. That's deep calling to deep. God is out in the deep waters. There's deep things that he's doing. I'm going to tell you this. I mentioned this a few weeks ago for our church. And I know not everyone is here and can gather right now. But I really feel in the spirit that God has given us the ability to gather as a church right now. And it's not just so that we can say, we, well, I get to go to church. I get to be there. I get to worship with people. And, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to see you today. Like, I, I love this. But I really believe in the spirit that God has given us this opportunity so that we can prepare our hearts for what it is that God desires to do in the next season to come. Here in this community, but also God working through this church, God is calling Christ Community Church out into the deep. Deep is calling to deep. The deep things in the spirit that God desi desires to do. That he's saying, prepare your heart for that. Get ready because there may be a time that I say it's time to get out of the boat. Prepare yourself to be used by God. To be a light in this community. To be salt, if you will. To be ready to witness to someone. As I said last week, to be ready to minister to someone. To be ready to pray with someone. To be ready to share your story with someone. To be ready to lead somebody to the Lord. That we're preparing our heart. We're not just coming to church right now and being a consumer, but we're coming to consume, to gather, to strengthen, so that we can go out into this world and be on God's missio day, to be on God's mission, to be a point person for the gospel to funnel through in our lives. But we got to go deep. It doesn't happen on the surface. It doesn't, it doesn't happen just, just playing church. It doesn't happen by just going through the motions of Christianity. It happens as we go deeper in the things of the Spirit. You know, Peter understood this. Uh, I, I'll say this to you, you know, just the enemy's goal for us is to get us so tired, weary, and depleted that as a result of that, we don't allow God to work in the deep things in our life. Or we, we say that God can't use us. Last week I told you, and if you missed the message, you can go online and watch it, that you are a minister. You are a minister. Maybe in the marketplace, a young person in your school, you are a minister. That God has called you. He desires to use you. There's an anointing that he has toward you to be used by him. But it's the enemy's goal to deplete you to the point that you don't feel like you have anything to minister with. And what he does is he comes and he robs the deep places in your heart. He depletes the, the, the areas of your heart, again, that only God and you probably would know. And he depletes you. On the surface, it looks like everything's okay because you got the mask on. We know how to put the mask on. But on the inside, in the deep places in you, there's nothing there. And the enemy comes and he robs. And then he convinces us you have nothing to give. You have nothing to offer. And so watch this, ministry that God desires to do in you and through your life will always be connected to the deep things in your spirit. That's why you got to get Hanani with God. Here I am. God, come and, and work in the deep places in my spirit. Come and do something fresh deep down within me because that's where ministry will flow out of your life. Come on, because that's where it's real to nobody else would know it but you. Because it's deep inside you. God's working deep in that hurt and that pain. God's brought you through something that no one else would know, but God's ministered deeply in your life. He's brought some joy that's deep in your heart. Amen. He's done some healing that's deep inside you because that's where ministry will flow out of your life. I'll say it this way. The deep things that God does within you, deep down, qualifies you then to minister it to other people. Qualifies you. And you being available for God to use you. Everybody say the deep things. The deep things. Number three here. Again, these are connected. God desires to touch your life. But God longs for intimacy with you. God longs for you. are hardwired not just for connection with God, but closeness. That's a great word that describes intimacy. We often put intimacy in the wrong context. Spiritually, we don't know exactly what that means most of the time because we equate intimacy to marriage, right? And even romance and, and so forth. But intimacy, right, is so powerful because intimacy is transparency. Intimacy, here's a great definition. 
If you're taking notes, write this down. Intimacy is knowing and understanding someone's thoughts consistently. Intimacy is knowing and understanding someone's thoughts consistently. Right? Like you get to a point, even in marriage, you know, I mean, where you, you start figuring out what your spouse is thinking. You know what I'm saying? By the way, once I think I've got her figured out, I realize I don't. But you know what I'm saying. Work with me. But it's that we know how each other thinks. You know, I, she can be thinking something and usually I can, I can sense it. I can feel it. Right? It's the same way spiritually. God wants us to know his thoughts consistently. Consistently. Will you, will you come, come up here? So here's the, here's the sub point. The enemy loves to shout his lies. By the way, he's always talking. He is a mouth. And he is the father of all lies. In other words, every lie that can be lied, the devil started it. And lies are always the opposite of God's truth. And so the enemy is constantly shouting his, he is blaring his lies at us saying, you will always walk alone. You'll never have anybody in your life. You're not going to be provided for. You're going to lose your job. You'll always be sick. You'll never be able to succeed in that business. You'll never be able to prosper. You're going to walk alone. You're going to be abandoned. And he shouts these lies. You'll never amount to anything. You'll always be ugly. I'm again, I'm not saying that to anybody, but I, he's always saying his lies. You'll never be able to break that addiction. You'll never be able to have a breakthrough. But watch this. The enemy shouts his lies, but God comes to us. And we know he's close because he whispers. You're not alone. I'll never leave you or forsake you. I'm Jehovah Jireh, your provider. I'm Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. I'm the God that's close. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. I'm for you, not against you. The battle's not yours. The battle is the Lord. I'm the God of restoration. I'm your redeemer. I'm your rock. I'm your refuge. I'm your strong tower. My name is over your life. My love is steadfast, never-ending, unmovable, unchanged. Amen. I'm with you in every season, Amen. in every storm. Amen. You know what I figured out? You can't listen to two voices at once. And, and the enemy is always shouting his lies, but God, right, he comes, and we know he's close because he whispers. Amen. He whispers. Amen. He speaks truth. He reminds us of his thoughts. He takes us deep with him. We have intimacy with him because we are hearing his thoughts Amen. through his whisper. Amen. Can I take you on a date this week? <laughs> yes, you yes, yes, you heard it. Now, now I'm committed. <laughs> Amen. But watch this. The enemy comes and he never stops. The enemy doesn't stop. But we need to be reminded that God has called us to intimacy so that we can hear his whisper. It really is a still, small voice. And I, I'm in the natural, I'm not going to tell you that it's easy to hear, but if we develop this, this uh, being known by God, who we are, as David talked about in that scripture, and as we been, begin to declare that over ourselves as children of the Most High God, and we begin to venture out saying, God, I want to go deeper with you, all of a sudden that voice becomes more clear. We hear it. And it's not this, we, look, we all want to hear God say, yes, you've got a decision next month and a job career change, and here's exactly what I want you to do. We, you know, we want that, but that wouldn't require a deep trust in the Lord. And God says, do you trust me? The deeper you walk with the Lord, the more clearly you hear his voice and the more you're going to trust in him in a greater way in your life. By the way, we start, right, being known by God. Here I am, Hanani. We go deep with God by saying, God, I want to go deeper with you. I surrender to you. Hanani, here I am. 
If you want to walk in closer intimacy with the Lord, you must say, into me see, Hanani, here I am, here I am. And out of that, right, it's exactly what we prayed earlier. We draw close to the Lord and he draws even closer to us. He comes close. He is the God that comes close, that he whispers his truth into our lives. Finally, number four uh, here, and really we're on a practical level, what I wanted to tell you really is where all this kind of rubber hits the, the road. God's purposes for your life will always flow out of your prayer life. God's purposes will always flow out of your prayer life. If you want to know God deeper, if you want to have a stronger relationship with the Lord, I know we all know this and it sounds so easy and, and yeah, yeah, I've heard that a hundred thousand times. Well, you need to hear it again today. I need to hear it again today. That if you're going to have your relationship with the Lord, be intimate and go deeper. And if you're going to be known by God, the way he created and hardwired you, it's going to come out of your prayer life. I'd love to say that if you just came to church more, that would happen. I'd love to even say that if you just read the Bible more, that would happen. But I would be doing you a disservice today. Intimacy flows through your prayer life. And it's the, it's the one area that's so easy. Come on. It's so easy, but we complicate it. Uh, or, we, or we say that we don't pray because we don't feel connected to God. And then we wonder why we're not connected to God, because we're not talking to him. But then we say to ourselves another lie, and we say, but but I've got things in my life that are not glorifying to God, and so I can't, Hanani, I can't say, and that's exactly what we're supposed to do. (laughs) And so we try to master our prayer life, whereas Robert Foster, the great theologian who wrote a great book of spiritual disciplines, I had to read it in college 27 years ago, great book. Celebration of spiritual disciplines. Read it. I encourage you. He said this, we try to master prayer when ultimately prayer is about mastering us. You can't master prayer. Prayer is about us being mastered. I don't mean that in a, like a, a, a bad way. I'm saying we, we can't hanani if we're not praying to God. It's not about you mastering your prayer life. I love that prayer is so powerful that even a toddler can pray. Isn't that cool? We're all qualified. If you can put syllables together, if you can put words together, you can pray. And yet many of us don't. Many of us don't. And we miss these simple opportunities to connect with God. Let me give you just three. There's three types of prayers that I want to mention to you. The first one is functional prayer. Functional prayer. This is the kind of prayer, you know, that basically is just going to God and asking for what we want. We're all guilty of that. I'm guilty of it, where we we pray just when we need something from God. God, I need you to do this. God, I God, I want this in my life, right? We we like him to give us the desires of our heart, but we don't do good at the delighting in him. Come on. So we go to God just in a functional way and we say, God, I need this. I need you to show up in this situation. That's that's not the great, look, God honors it, I think, at times because he wants us to come to him. But parents, you get that. If your kids are only coming to you when they want something, that gets old, you know? You'll put up with it a little bit, but after a while, it's like, all right, where's the love, you know? Where is the, hey, I love you, mom or dad, thanks for all you do for me kind of thing before you need something, you know? I think God feels that way at times. The the second one is a transactional prayer, and you know what that means. That means, uh, God, you do this for me, and I'll do this for you. You do this for me, I'll do this for you. And that's not how God operates. Uh, If if that was the case, then uh, we'd be in trouble. (laughs) We would be in trouble. We wouldn't have salvation, probably, number one, uh, because God said, I already did it all for you. I already did it all. It's not about a transaction. But it's that, you know, God, you do this and I'll do this. Uh, God, you, you show up in this area of my life and I'll surrender this area of my life. God, you, you bring this into my life. You give me this career. You give me that whatever. You fill in the gap. And, and I'll, uh, you, you bless this, God, and I'll tithe. 
I just thought I'd slip that in there. You, you do this and I'll, I'll do this. Again, it's this transactional uh, thing. But the prayer that God honors the greatest, when we, what we need to learn to live in, is a relational prayer. It's this relationship that I'm talking about. And, and this prayer is powerful because it's, it, it is functional. It's got some transaction stuff maybe going on in it, but it's more of a conversation that's happening. Again, it's relationship-oriented. God, thank you that you hear, my, you hear my cries. You know who I am, right? You, 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 you hear me when I'm talking. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, says this. Verse 16 says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Be joyful always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances. This is God's will. If you're looking for God's will, as I often quote this scripture, this is it. This is it. We're all looking for something to do. And God says, hey, this is my will. Be joyful. Pray consistently. Give thanks. And you're going to experience the will of God as you do that. But the pray without ceasing is, is difficult, right? That's always the part of that. Like, okay, I can be joyful most of the time. I can give thanks most of the time. But praying all the time, like, how do you pull that off? How do you do that? Well, let me tell you, here's how you do it. You make your prayer life invitational. Make your prayer life consciously inviting God into your context, inviting God into your thought life, inviting God into your job. As we said last week, remember, we like to compartmentalize our life, right? We struggle taking the sacred into the secular. We know what the sacred is. We like the sacred, but we struggle merging those two together. How do you do that? You take the sacred, your conversation with God, and you put it into your life in every way, including God, inviting God into your prayer life, inviting God into your context, inviting God into your situation constantly, constantly, constantly. About a year ago, I, I learned this. I'd never heard this term before. But so simple and so powerful, and it's called breath prayers. Breath prayers. And they are literally prayers that you can say in one breath. Everybody say breath prayers. If you don't hear anything else I say today, like grab this and put this into practice in your life. Breath prayers. What is a breath prayer? It's a prayer you can say in one breath. I don't know what that is. Here you go. You ready? Lord, I trust you. The Lord is my shepherd. Again, I, we just keep going. God, I need you in this meeting. <laughs> God, help my family. God, I need you in this moment right now. The, the simple prayers, consciously invoking God and inviting him into your context, all of a sudden, this scripture that I just read becomes a real cool reality. That no matter what you're doing, even if it's on the computer, that you're including and inviting God into it. If you're a teacher, right, you're including God into your classroom, at least in how you're thinking, praying that. And you can do it in your mind, but sometimes we actually need to say it. That's what's cool about breath prayers is you don't have to go to some closet somewhere and spend 30 minutes on your knees or 45 minutes, which probably a lot of us don't do. And we disqualify ourselves from a prayer life when God just said, hey, just talk to me. Just pull me into your context. Just include me. Just include me. God, be with my kids today. God, touch my body. I love God's big enough just to respond to a breath prayer. God, come close to me. God, I want to feel your presence. God, bring your joy over my life today. Again, we could go a thousand different directions. Simple breath prayers. I want to challenge you today to invite God into your life. You'll be amazed. I'm just going to tell you, if you'll do this and you'll develop a discipline to do it, you'll be amazed at how much more you experience God in your day-to-day -day lives. Not just on a Sunday morning, gathered together like this. You'll feel God's presence. 
God's there with you. God's moving because he responds to simple conversation that we have with him. Remember this Psalm 139, this intimacy, this relationship that David has is because he invites God into his context. When we don't have God in our context, then we do the wrong things. But when we keep God in our context, we stay anchored. And watch this. Instead of hearing the lies of the enemy, we hear the consistent thoughts that God whispers to us. Lord, I trust you. We hear God's whisper. I'll lead you into all righteousness for my name's sake. We hear his reminders of who he is and the promises of God in our life. Amen. Would you stand to your feet today as we close our service out? And we'll close with a part of this worship song. I ask you to bow your head this morning. Maybe those watching today, maybe you're there. I, I want to invite you today and right here in this room, if you're disconnected from the Lord in your relationship, that starts, just as I just said, with an invitation to say, God, I need you. That breath prayer right there is so powerful. God, I need you. I believe in what you've done through your son, Jesus. And I ask you to forgive me today. Give me new life in Jesus Christ. Give me a new beginning today. I declare it. I want to be close with you. I want intimacy with you. I want to walk deeper with you. You can do that today simply by saying those words. But if you're here today and you you say, Pastor, I, I, I want to experience what we're talking about here today. I want to go deeper in my relationship with the Lord. I, I want to walk closer with the Lord than I've ever walked before in this season. I don't know what the future holds, but I want greater intimacy with my Creator. So today I say, Hanani, here I am to the great I am. If you want to go deeper with the Lord today, you just slip your hand up. I'm going to pray specifically for you today. Just keep it up for just a moment. I, I'm not even looking around. I just, it's between you and the Lord. God, I thank you today for a people that know who they are in Christ. I thank you for a people that are ready and willing, Lord, to go deeper and further with you, to get off the surface things and experience the greater things that you have in store for them. Lord, we know that that comes through relationship. Your purposes flow through relationship and our connection to you. Lord, I pray for a holy hunger in their life. I thank you for a discipline, God, just to, to talk to you consistently. God, forgive us for making prayer a burden. But may we remember how simple you made it, that you hardwired us for connection with you. And all we have to do is simply, Lord, keep these breath prayers going, that we're consciously aware of your working in and around our lives, that we are inviting you consistently into every arena of our life. So God, I just thank you. I thank you for growth. Thank you for new ground that your people are gaining in their relationship with you. We curse the lies of the enemy. And devil, we tell you, you have no place that we will not give you our ear any longer. We turn our ear to the voice of the Holy Spirit who echoes the voice of truth in our life so that we can hear the whisper of God over and over and over again. May we stay close to you as you are close to us. May we draw near to you as you draw near to us. And we thank you for that intimacy, Lord, that we would have with you, that we would carry into a new season as you prepare us for greater things, greater things. I thank you for that today. I thank you for that for a teenager here this morning or maybe watching today, that they would not feel exempt today, Lord, that you desire to be close with them, to give them your consistent thoughts. I thank you for that for a husband and wife here today, a, a grandparent here today, God, that's in, in a different season. Lord, I thank you that they would draw closer to you than they ever have before. We as a church, God, that's our prayer. That's our desire. And we thank you, Lord, that you would come consume us and may you grow like never before inside of us. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
What a great time of worship in the Word that we've had today, and we are so thankful that you tuned in online with us. Hey, if you gave your heart to Christ for the first time today, we want to know about it, and we want to connect with you. Please go on our website and fill out a digital connection card so that we can celebrate with you. And if you have a prayer request or a praise report, we want to know about it and connect with you because, hey, we're a family. Also, you have multiple ways that you can give. You can give through our website, text to give, or on our Realm app. So make sure you go online and give so that we can give back to the kingdom and continue to make an impact locally and globally. God bless you, and thank you again for tuning in. I hope that you have a great week.